All right, Mr. Sotko here, and welcome back to another War Game Red Dragon replay cast. Today it is another 4chan 3 vs. 3 tournament game on the 2 vs. 2 version of Highway to Soul, which I don't get to cast that often. And the teams, our blue team, is Team Wardong, that consists of Frosty, Enraged, Ewok, and Random Letters. And on the right side of the map, we have our red team, which is Team Tentacle Rape. Features Father Ark, Vaughn, and Rents. And we'll speed this on up till the 2x mark. Everybody comes out and all the cool things start to happen. Well, maybe the 7x mark. Who cares? Either way. And the game revolves, of course, around the middle of the map, usually. As uh, these two are very easy to get. Golf and Foxtrot and Charlie and Bravo, respectively, for the teams. But then Delta and Echo is usually where it's at. But uh, sometimes the game can take very crazy ways particularly on this map, because sometimes I've seen people just drive right up the middle and actually do really good pushes straight up the middle. And it's very interesting. And now I'm moving out with lots of helicopter troops, more than likely trying to get to Echo as soon as possible. And while we have lots of troops moving up the center of the map, up that big highway, as it is Highway to Seoul, which does make sense. A couple CVs in the mix. And lots of things. Can't even tell. Lots of, actually, lots of armor uh, for our red team and the blue team. Tornado flying around the air. Trying to scout out the land. See if it could spot anything. We do have some helicopter troops from our blue team from random letters. Also trying to get to Echo as fast as possible. And both sides going to make it there about the same time. But we do have a Super Cobra here for the blue team. And may shoot down a couple of these helicopters. Only have two infrared missiles, though. So they're really going to have to make those count. And not so much armor for our blue team. We do have a couple HCs. It looks like an M1A2 in the mix there. So a little bit of armor, but it looked like the red team had a little bit more. So we'll see how that works out. Super Cobra Brass and Aloy blasting away. Talking is hard with the 20 millimeter. As it ran out of infrared already, as it only has two missiles. Somebody should tell the army to put a couple more missiles on there, but the Seiklos missiles, the tow missiles, taking out some of those APCs, those Falsham Jaegers were in. Or actually, it was rather a aircraft that landed on the ground. But, um, either way. And now Charlie here, entering. And no CVs from the blue team. It looked like the red team had a little bit more CVs. We do have a CV here, trying to make it to Echo. And so I think Team Tentacle Rape will capture more first than Team Wardong. However, that is going to lower the amount of units they have on the map, as CVs are fairly expensive, usually about 100, 110, 120-ish for the uh, regular ones. But if you go CV Command Tanks, uh, then it does cost you, of course, a little bit more. So that uh, 100 can uh, turn into another tank or turn into a few more troops. And sometimes that can make the difference. LAV 25 Scout firing away at these Saxons here. And that Bushmaster 25 millimeter going to be doing work on these 50 cows here. Royal Marines and Gurkhas in the back there. And some SMAs are released and now blasting away at Saxon SMAs. So, so good at taking out troops, or rather, vehicles. And M1A1s, M8 AGS, and a couple more M1A1s moving up on these Gurkhas here as things cross across the open ground there. M1A1 is just going to be blasting away and having a good time. Martyrs and the A1Gs here releasing the troops. Looks like we have some Jaegers and some Panzer Grenadiers about to be released and make their way into the wood line. Now the Leopards firing away. And looks like a Challenger there was taken out by the Leopards, and M1HC and an M1A2 moving across the way, two HCs, so quite a bit of armor right in this small area here, but our red team looks like the armor is spread out a little bit more across the map, so we'll see how that works out. And that M1A2 and HC, the king of the crop there, the A12, or rather the M1A2, 1A2. Blasting away, although has one less armor than the Challenger, its accuracy, stabilizer, and stuff is all, is all a little bit better, and its um, attack power, armor penetration, is a little bit higher as well. So they're pretty much the same, but I think the M1A2 takes the cake there, because one, one armor doesn't really make too much of a difference. Start right there, taking out, trying to make its way across open ground, being a silly stalwart, and not getting anywhere. So far, zero to zero, and it looks like... 
Team Wardong has a slight advantage at 17 whole points over their opponent. And neither side really capturing too much at the moment here. We do have a CV all the way back in here, but it looks like uh, our red team, Team Tentacle Rape, cannot get it into Echo right now as there really is no way. It would have to cross across this open ground and get itself in these small tree lines here, which usually don't provide too much protection. And there's lots of armor over here that would love to take that out. And we have a couple Leopard 1A5s as well that would love to get their hands on that CV. It's also stuck in the mud. Gurk is now moving up on the, the 3A3s here. It takes those out pretty easy, the Law 80s. And Assault Engineers back there. Only 10 of them, though. You only get five Assault Engineers uh, per group. But I really like Assault Engineers. But you just need so many of them. And you always run out in your deck because you require so many at a time to really do uh, a lot. I usually like to have groups of 20 of them. And that tends to do a lot. But then you lose 20 from a bombing run and such. So Assault Grenadiers, I have uh, mixed feelings about the Assault Engineers, not the Assault Grenadiers. And those two HCs moving up again now on the SBS and the A and the in the SAS. And they have to bail out of there. They have AT4s, but uh, not too much of a match for the AC or the HC as the uh, AT4 doesn't do a lot. Would take a number of them to take one down. And the A2 there finishes off that group of SAS. Golf and Charlie a bit neutral right now. Bit of a stalemate. Neither side can really push forward all that much, as there's open ground for each side. Hard to get around, even on the sides here. Lots of open ground, although that is high ground, so anything on the ground down here, it's a really hard time attacking up there. So it takes a bit of finagling to get uh, your opponent's golf or Charlie there. Although smoke, 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 smoke always does the trick in Wargame Red Dragon. Actually, I was playing a game yesterday. It was a 3 versus 3 couple friends of mine versus a few others and I made a very very excellent push using labs and I smoked and then pushed tons of M1A1s and just regular M1s I actually really enjoy the M1 the regular M1 as it's very cheap really gets the job done although its optics are very unfortunately poor but I made a push with using smoke and it really worked out lots of infantry along with my push Esmaz here going at it with SBS and the Humvee there with the Browning 50 cal and that Humvee did not last too long. Gurkhas in the woods there backing up from that Cobra. Cobra flying away at the toe. And looks like it is all out of rockets so no more rockets for that Cobra. Gonna have to take that back to the forward operating base. You better use this Hemet here. One of the two. But uh, that Hemet would get juiced pretty quickly by that Cobra, putting all those missiles back on. Gurk is here going at it with Assault Engineers and Riflemen, and looks like they will win out on this. There isn't too many Assault Engineers or Riflemen, although Assault Engineers do uh, a lot of damage. And they will take out some of these Gurkhas with those Napalm, but I'm not sure if they're going to win. It's actually looking uh, like they may win. It's a very tight fight there. Chaparral there. And a Leopard 1A1 a recon vehicle. SBS unable to make it across here. And the Gurkhas in here are really the only thing defending the front end of Delta from the blue team here getting into or moving up past Foxtrot there. And they did win over those. Nope, there's 10 left. It was covered up by the red marker there. And 10 Gurkhas left, only one Assault Engineer. So I think that is about it for those Assault Engineers and Riflemen. Not always the greatest. You kind of need those in numbers and just use them to push. Now the red team trying to get down the right side of the map here and pushing some troops, but just troops. Not really un unable to really fire long range at the random stuff. Martyrs and Leopards over here at Flak Panzer as well. And we have a recon helicopter all the way out here looking for trouble. Recon helicopter all the way over here too. Peace Ryan now flying across the map. And looking for a target here. And there is a Challenger 2 on the edge of the woods, and it may be spotted. But no, the Peace Run looks like it doesn't spot anything. And he's just sort of flying it around, having a good time. Might be able to get this Leopard here, but uh, evax that before it is able to take anything out. Challenger 2, pack it up now. As you can see, the M1A2, 22 frontal armor, 70% accuracy, 65% stabilizer, and 24 AP. And the Challenger 2, very, very similar, 70%, 65% so similar there, but has 22 AP power and 23 frontal armor. 
So it is a dime, so it is a, you know, like a 50-50 a thing. And it does 4 HE power too, so it's a little bit better against infantry. So I suppose they're just about the same thing. Very, very, very close. So basically M1A2, a little bit better against, uh, about, at killing tanks. And armored vehicles with that higher AP power. Challenger 2, a little bit better at absorbing frontal end damage and a little bit better at uh, taking out troops with that 120 as it does a couple or one more AHE power. Martyr 1A2 there, launch and stay close. Milan's at the M1A2 here. But uh, gonna take a little bit more than that to take out this M1A2. And all those attack at the same time there and take out that Martyr. HC is now moving up into the wood line here. We have some LVTPs, possibly Marines inside. And I'm going to push into the wood line here. Just one Gurkha and one Jaeger. And so it's one versus one right now. And Gurkhas win. That well, didn't last too long. And the HC is here under fire a lot from Martyrs. Those tow missiles, those Milans. But so far doing a really good job of keeping these alive and not really even taking too much damage. The M1A2 took a little bit of damage, but that's usually what it is for. You usually bring a M1A2 forward, eat a couple hits, and allow your other tanks and the M1A2 itself to uh, take down what you need. Chinook recon here. Going to be landing below this mountain. Perhaps going to take some recon and try and put it on top of the mountain and see what's going on through here. But still, now a plus two advantage for Team Wardong as they capture Delta and Echo, and uh, that is what you need to do in this map. As I, as I said earlier, Charlie and Bravo, very easy to take, of course, because they're on your respective sides, along with Golf and Foxtrot. So really, it sort of comes down to the middle ones, which one can take which. And if each side takes one of them, it's still zero and zero, so you kind of need to take both. Or at least do a combination and take Golf. But Golf is a little hard to take. As you can see all the open ground there. It's hard to get around. As soon as you push troops across here, you're going to get struck by Abrams, Bradleys, etc. But again, smoke, smoke, smoke. Smoke is so good in war game. Flak Panzer there takes down a chopper. Martyr 2 now moving up. And MRS there. Firing mortars away. And didn't really get too much there. Panicked some of these tanks. But no big deal. And the... Black Panzer there, out of stingers, but still has that 35mm radar ammo, going strong. LVTPs trying to make their way up and successfully make their way into the edge of the wood line here. So now they're getting pretty close. We have a Challenger 1, Challenger 2 there, two Challenger 2s. I believe that's all you can get is two Challenger 2s, similar to the M1A2. You can only get two of them in a deck, I do believe. I don't play British decks or Commonwealth decks all that much. And the Challenger 2 is 10 less than the A2, so very, very close there. And now bombing the wood line here. Unfortunately, nothing in there and sort of misses the wood line in itself and just hits absolutely nothing. But that does happen from time to time. And now the Assault Engineers, the Fusiliers here, got to watch out for these. Need to, oh, both of them destroyed at the same time there, but actually didn't lose too many Marines, surprisingly. Both of them got out with all of the Marines alive. However, those four A1Gs and the Fusiliers all blasting down on them at once with four uh, 762s. Those 308s busting them up pretty bad. And now we have A1Gs now moving in and perhaps uh, two riflemen here trying to get in and no Panzer Grenadiers. And two CS moving in. One of my favorite units in the game. Love, love, love CS. They are so good. And uh, their, su their suppression is just amazing. And watch them rip up the units in this town. It's just so fun to watch them. And as you can see, the number is just pouring down. And that is because of these CS here. Just keep CS around. They are only 20 apiece. So you can get uh, four, like a four, a quad group of them for just 80. And they annihilate troops. And here they go with the green jackets. And they will be on the Jaegers next. And as you can see, just lowering those Jaegers so fast. Never leave home without your CS in your deck. 
they also do decent at helicopters. Uh, they also attack airplanes, but uh, you need a, a good dozen of them to actually destroy an airplane by themselves. So really not worth it in that sense. But they do decent against uh, helicopters. But uh, when I mean decent, I just mean, uh, you know, relatively decent. Takes them a while sometimes. Their accuracy is not so good. As you can see, 20% accuracy, so it takes uh, a while. Two Challenger 2s here, and the Challenger 1 Mark 3s. And the A2 pushing up, the Leopard also pushing up as well. We have an HC pushing up the line as well. And I don't know what happened to that other HC. Perhaps it was taken out by those two Challengers and the A2 there. Looks like we've got one Challenger Mark 3 there, and the Challenger 2s pummeling this A2. And the A2 ready to fire again. And hits the frontal armor of that Challenger 2, but the Challenger 2 loves, loves, love eating damage with that 23 frontal armor, and the A2 loses, but uh, that is not surprising. It looks like one Challenger 2 was destroyed, and uh, with three or four tanks at once attacking an A2, you really can't uh, expect too much. And now the HC pulls up to the line and cannot attack the Challenger 2 or the Challenger uh, 1 right now, as it, they are behind smoke, but now they are right in front, and the Panzer Grenadiers might be able to get a... 110 on those challengers, but no loses those HC looks like he lost it to these leopards and challenger two there Still doing a good job regardless of not taking Foxtrot doing oh, there is that other HC was looking for that one and uh, Regardless of not really taking Foxtrot at the moment They are holding the red team back at the moment while they hold Delta and Echo and also holding sort of the umbrella of the red team trying to push around here and still with that plus two advantage, 318 to zero, F-45 Phantom now flying overhead. And bombs nothing, it's gonna evac. And it looks like the tornado did bomb though. And it looks like it might hit that CV directly, hits the CV directly, giving the blue team, Wardong, plus three advantage now, by taking out that CV. So that was a very good bombing run. Must have been spotted uh, earlier and he tried to bomb there. Or it was just inadvertently bombed. Sometimes that does happen. You kind of sort of just choose, just sort of blindfold yourself and choose where to artillery. Sometimes you get a CV. Cobra firing away, but not going to last too long. Was underneath, or was rather over 24 Jaegers there. They were all firing on it at once. Not going to last too long doing that. 20 Marines trying to get into the town there before uh, getting busted up. By the Saxon and the incoming Gurkhas. Now the HC here firing away. They got that Saxon. And now the Gurkhas here are in a little bit of trouble. If this uh, HC moves forward and uh, takes a Hellfire missile there to the frontal armor, and another one is coming. If it takes another one directly, it will lose that HC. But it uh, looks like he'll survive for now. That Lynx is going to move up and try again. And he is backing up for his life. Here comes another Hellfire missile. And is it going to hit? And hits the armor. Bye-bye, HC. But they did their job. They did last quite a while. Those two HCs and the 1A2 did a lot of work. So good enough. Now Ch Chieftain Marksman's moving in here. And uh, moving them up front here into the wood line. But there isn't too much air. Now an F-15D Eagle, as soon as I say that, flies over the Chieftain Marksman's. But it doesn't get close enough. And they are moving. Perhaps he wasn't on attack move. Just too far. Sometimes that happens too. Eel, Scorpion, Light Tank. Hanging out at the edge of the wood line there. Bradley and uh, 20 Riflemen guarding the edge of the wood line. But uh, I don't see anybody pushing anytime soon over there. So they have the easy job. Now two CVs. Double CV to Echo here. Both of them hidden fairly close to each other. I would suspect one should be over here and one over there. And an Avenger and three LAV 25 Scout. Moving on up. However, there are two Leopard 2A1s that are going to meet them head on. And those 2A1s will almost certainly win. So we have only 25 millimeter guns. And the Avenger is just a truck with some stingers on it, basically. And those 2A1s having a good time blasting away. Turn their turrets. They got all those LAVs. I didn't expect much out of that. Friends shouldn't do this to each other. I actually don't know what that means. I really didn't see that. And friends should do this to, to each other up there as well. Mysterious. And over there as well. Looks like the, maybe the CV was spotted, perhaps. However, this one isn't near the CV at all, so don't know what that's all about. It's 
And now pushing up with lots of A1Gs here. Now 40 Jaegers have come out, but a Harrier is moving overhead. And going to be dropping and going to hit eh, some of those A1Gs, but not a big deal. And uh, the A1Gs, not a big deal themselves anyway, as they are just troop carriers with those 308s on there. And now the Cobra moving in, trying to get out of there as the Lynx on the way with those Stingers takes that out, along with the F4 there. Two A1s. Moving on in. Two, two A1s, that is. CB tried to be uh, brought into Foxtrot here, and it's stunned and panicked right now because it is in the middle of a forest fire. So I don't blame it. I would be a little panicked too if I was in the middle of a forest fire in a armored vehicle burning alive. Yeah, that tends to panic you. Mortars here flying away and hitting these Jaegers was hitting them, but uh, they are already moved out of the way. Now it looks like they moved forward a little bit. Just by chance, hit a couple more of those Jaegers, but they're going to be just fine. Now that warrior has moved out of there, but it has one bar of health, so pretty much anything. If it sneezes, it will die. Jaeger, just five left here. And multiple Bradleys, four Bradleys, uh, A2 Bradleys, now moving out. So the cheaper Bradleys... But they get the job done. 2,625 meter range on those 25 AP power Cyclos missiles. So they do do the job, and they are very accurate as well. Longbow pushing forward here. Going to spot these uh, Warrior 90s and the Bradleys. And Longbow here just going to take out some of these armored vehicles. But uh, both of those miss. And Jaegers and Jaegers going at it. F4 there. Takes that out with the Vulcan. Very nice indeed. Harrier was moving out. But uh, looks like it's decided to say, screw it. I'm just going to do circles over the battlefield. And Chieftain Marksman is here. Going to be firing away at that Eagle. And I don't think they're going to get that. But they are going to get bombed. And one Chieftain Marksman there was lost. Another one. Three bars of health. Gurkhas and loses that other one too with the Wild Weasels. Now, plus five advantage here for the blue team as golf has been neutralized, taking one point away from the opponent, and Foxtrot has been taken. So there is the two points there. Now, if they bring a CV to a golf, they will have a plus six advantage, but I doubt they will even have time to do that. And now the Fusiliers here taking damage as they try to move across open ground. And those warriors in front... And you have a Leopard Command vehicle here. Eight frontal armor, so it can take a little bit of damage. 30 millimeters now coming up front here. And just going to try and take out that CV tank. But uh, not doing enough damage. Just taking one bar of health away every few shots that they hit. And 30 Fusilier is going to try and make it into the town there. Another bar lost of health on that Leopard. And both sides really can't seem to hit each other here. And there they go. The Jaegers take it into their own hands to take out... That vehicle there, Blackhawk now moving in, and a Cobra moving in here. And this is one brave Cobra. And there are Stingers there. And looks like he will be running into those shortly. And Cobra taken out there. Didn't last too long. Very, very brave Cobra, but uh, we be hitting the ground sooner or later. It is still going. That's nice. I'm actually going to follow this for a minute. I just want to see how far I can get. That was really far. That was some good distance on that spinning helicopter there. Must have lost its anti-torque rotor and was having a good time. Probably passed out from the G-forces of that. That was wild. Leopard 2A5 has moved across open ground there. Gets hit by two Cyclos missiles at the same time. Takes out two of them at the same time. That was very nice indeed. And now Challenger Mark 1 Stalwarts moving across. Challenger Mark 3 there moving across as well. Challenger, Mark, or Challenger 1 Mark 3. Oh my. And now the Challenger here. Going to take some side armor damage and loses that. And these helicopters were having a good time until the DAP took away their fun. And it looks like that is it for the game. Team Wardong, the winners by quite a long shot there. No points for Team Tentacle Rape. But I hope you guys enjoyed this replay, and I'll see you guys next time.